Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anna Kudersan. So I'm a political economist. And recently I've been working on housing. So what I'm going to, to present to you is more of a research agenda than uh, complete results. So this is just something I'm starting right now. Not right now, but very, very recently. So uh, this is uh, my, my ambitions are both empirical and theoretical. So uh, I'm very inspired by, by this book, Interior Capitalism, by uh, Brad Christophers, and how uh, capitalism is, is, be is becoming interiorized. Uh, in recent years, um, as, um, as it describes that economic activities is increasingly conducted by rentiers in the sense that they are structured around the control of and generation of income from rents, from, from uh, scarce assets. So this is mainly a macroeconomic perspective on the structural changes occurring at the economic level and, um, and it identifies uh, these eight categories of uh, assets that are becoming uh, more dominant and the actual source of uh, extracting income from the economy. I would like to focus on property assets and try to connect these macroeconomic uh, changes, how they connect with changes occurring at household level. Mm -hmm. So in the sense, what I'm trying to see is to what extent families are becoming rentiers themselves uh, and how housing is playing its part on this process. So I, I was very struck by this quote uh, from this book that, um, so in the morning we were talking about uh, uh, income inequalities, basically. So our, our, the housing system of provision has evolved. It is becoming, it's, it's turning our attention to, to wealth and to um, the distribution of wealth and particularly of real estate assets. So, uh, according to this author, he says that the most striking thing right now in what comes to inequality is that exclusion uh, is much more uh, determined by common health um, and in, in this uh, exclusion is uh, from being locked out of ownership, as we've been just discussing, the, the increasing role of ownership. So being excluded, excluded from, locked out from ownership is the, today the real mark of inequality. Because the other side of, 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 of this coin is that the more you are excluded from ownership nowadays, the more you pay in rent. This is the, the mechanism. Uh, we started with really financialization and this process, this project is very much about the financialization of housing, but it seems to me that financialization in the new stage, uh, financialization is, is a, a part of the interiorization of housing. So in the beginning when we start but started to talk about financialization, it was all about mortgages, as we've just been discussing right now. Uh, state fin subsidizing ownership through, through subsidizing mortgages, uh, um, all public support to the financial sector, to the constructor sector to, to, to make this happen. But more and more, uh, the recent developments Housing has become an asset uh, from which uh, many, many agents are investing. So it's not just financial investors in the, in the, in the second stage uh, that 
uh, as a result of the financial crisis, to purchase um, the homes from, uh, from the houses who, who become um, insolvent. Uh, but they then become um, uh, a business for, uh, for uh, other types of investors, investing in the local real estate. In the, uh, sector, and more recent, it is also it is also spreading to small investors like uh, the wealthier households who are purchasing uh, second homes, third homes for for investment in the, in their own countries and abroad. So this is the fourth stage is what I'm looking at. So uh, this is also inspired by um, uh, recent research that is um, analyzing the impact of, of these changes, economic and housing sector, in social, social structure. So some sociologists uh, have been proposing new class uh, categories to account for this transformation. So combining more traditional uh, class uh, categories based on the position between labor and capital with uh, categories based on the, the, the position households relate to housing, mainly as homeowners or investors versus uh, being um, a tenant. So, um, so I'm not. I don't have time to go through this. But uh, now the dividing line is not only um, your place in in, in in the accumulation process, um, how much you earn, but which asset, which kind of assets you have, you possess. So, uh, so I, th I I also like very much this quote. So. Uh, uh, in the top of these categories, people don't just uh, earn higher incomes, but gain most of their income from capital and rental income, rather than from labor. So it is not really now the level of income that defines class, the class position, but how uh, this income is, is earned and what form it takes. And at the bottom, uh, we have people who are paying rent to those who stand up. And it's not only that they, they are pay, pay rent to the other classes, it's also that they are paying increasing rent to the other classes. This is another category. I prefer much more than the previous one. Um, I think it, it combines better the two dimensions of class uh, restructuring right now. But just to say that this is an ongoing discussion right now the role of housing wealth in class restructuring. There is some related literature uh, in, which, um, in which the way in which housing is, is becoming also uh, a, a, an extra source of income to complement or substitute the welfare state. So this also, is, uh, this is a, 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 this also connects with neoliberalism and all the changes occurring in different sectors. So all this is always connected. So it's not, it's not just what is going on in the economy, in the housing sector, in the public policies. Uh, so we need to connect all these, all these, all these changes. So uh, housing has also become a, a part of public policy in the sense that uh, the support for home ownership has been also uh, a strategy to the rollback of the welfare state. So, because as, as soon as um, uh, citizens became homeowners, they have an extra source of income from which they can um, have recourse to in case of need, uh, mostly uh, after retirement. So this is also related to the transformations occurring in the pension system of provision. Okay. Another literature, this is really, really recent, is now that 
In the housing studies, we have been very much focusing on home ownership, in the, in the property of residential homes. Now, the shift is, it's not the shift, but we are, uh, researchers are also looking at uh, the way in which um, uh, households are also buying second properties to get an extra income from them. So, what I really want to add now in this research is to look at corporate relations in all these processes. So, I'm looking mainly within Europe, and there is some data uh, for, for the EU. So, we see that um, the, the, the country situation, as we've been discussing this morning, is very is very distinct. I, I organize the countries by regions, and you see that even within regions, the situation is very different. So very different situations in what uh, in what regards the, the possession of uh, real assets and uh, the rights of home ownership uh, and the rights of secondary property. But still, you 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 can have some some easily identified trends. Um, Eastern European countries, Southern European countries have higher rates of home ownership. And uh, um, and as well as well less of second properties. But the situation is really quite um, quite uh, different even within regions. So what, uh, what uh, um, I, I, I was interested in looking at is, so we have different rates of, of ownership, of the ownership of second, second properties, but the real question is who extracts income from these second properties. So, um, so we, uh, for, for these countries, we see, so we have here, owners of secondary property, property. So the situation is very heterogeneous across countries. But when you look at the households that have also rental income, we can see that it's the core countries that, uh, in where households, a bigger percentage of households have rental income. Okay. Namely, Germany, France, Luxembourg, Ireland. This is the, the average for the euro area. So the COP countries are the countries where uh, most uh, where households have more rental income. In terms of the here we have the percentage of households, but when we look at uh, the percentage of rental income to total income of households, the situation is somewhat different. So here in, the, in uh, Southern European countries and Eastern European countries, uh, even though it's a, a smaller proportion of households who rent income, but those who have rental income, this income is more relevant for them to the whole income they get, okay? So this, of course, this is because uh, countries from uh, North and Central Europe, uh, they have higher incomes, so the rental, so they have rental income, but they already have other sources of uh, income, and these sources also provide them higher income, okay? So this is, uh, I added rental income, so income from property and income from financial assets. And if you add these two types of assets, that are the main assets that, uh, that also have, uh, properties and uh, income from financial investments, namely uh, pension, uh, private pension plans. So if you, here you have um, households with voluntary patients, here you have households with rental income. And if you cross these two, Yet again, we have Germany and France as the countries in which households have more, a more 
varied, uh, more varied sources of income. Okay. So the literature, I have to speed up. So the literature um, finds different differences between uh, corporate and conservative welfare states. So in countries like Germany, those were Germany, France, Ireland, and Belgium, this is this, this rental and financial asset investment by households uh, or mainly by workers outside from the welfare state. So self-employed self workers who don't have um, a regular contribution career, so they were more or less excluded from uh, uh, state, uh, welf the welfare state, let's say this way. So this was the logic of a, as a complement. So those who don't uh, are covered by the welfare state, they have invested more in, in financial and in real estate assets to have an income. Liberal welfare states um, are those who have more wealth, so they are also more protected and still they have more income to invest in financial and real estate. Uh, in the real estate. So looking to Portugal, so uh, what I what I want to show is that uh, that is very bad. That's why I said this is a research project, uh, a, um, a research agenda. That is very bad. Uh, we cannot disentangle the, the first data that I showed to you. I don't know uh, wh where those investments are. And, uh, so it, it's really bad. Most of the data that we have is either fragmented from the National Statistics Institute or come from real estate agencies who are in the business because they produce their reports. So we don't really have uh, data to quite understand uh, the role of, re of property in inequalities and also these car periphery relations. So who, 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 who owns what? and uh, what they earn from it. So this is really difficult. But we do, we do, we do know that in recent years, there's been an incredible rise of purchases by non-residents. And, um, and you know, we know the main uh, nationalities of those who have been purchasing properties in the country. So, this is also the result of, of policy, in a, namely, so in the previous financial life period, we have policies to fund mortgages, to residents, to buy their homes. Now we have, what we have is, is subsidies to, this foreign, to these wealthy foreigners to buy second properties in the country. So this is the fiscal benefits. So this in 2020, just for this program of the purchase of no residents, this amount for one year is the same as, as promised for financing um, housing policy for the next four years in Portugal. Okay? From the budget, the Portuguese budget. This is this is uh, income that the, that the country does not get because of these subsidies. So in one year, we are giving these subsidies, which is the same amount as the budget for four years by the Portuguese government. And there are other, there are other. Now we introduce for the digital nomaders. <laughs> which is a similar, a similar kind of program. Also the residence permits, the, gold, the famous, infamous gold visa. So now uh, real estate, real estate uh, companies are promoting, are promoting the, the sale of properties 
outside, so the Portuguese don't have uh, income, or those who live in Portugal, we have in Portugal, don't have income to, to purchase, so there is all this in industry of, of saving uh, properties outside the country, and you can see that tax, unique tax benefits, it's one of the attractions. <laughs> Also, the, the, consumer, the Portuguese Consumer Association provides advice for the Portuguese, the, wealth, the wealthier, to invest, how to invest. This is the result, which, um, so Lisbon, which has been attracting all this investment, has become uh, one of the world's most unlivable cities. This is the this uh, is based on the price of housing and the incomes of the residents. But now we thought that with the pandemic and the housing crisis things are changing, but no. What the change is the is the the origin of the country of those who are purchasing. So now we have this influence of, of Americans who are heading Europe for the good life. So these, uh, these are, re the, in this case we have residents. I think they intend to live in Portugal um, because they can afford the houses, beautiful country, <laughs> flex, uh, flex rate, uh, um, Texas, uh, nice wine, and so on and so forth. But this is not really a case for also the rent uh, of uh, rent tourism. This is, but this the purchase of these uh, by these wealthy households of. Um, the, real, the Portuguese real estate, what it does is to decrease the supply of housing, raise, raise the, the house prices, the rents, and it's a form of indirect form of rent tourism, but because then the rents, the, the house prices and the rents for the residents also, also raise. So this is a, a sort of indirect um, mechanism. Wow. And to, so I think this is this is difficult to to study. Um, the data is very fragmented. We have to cherry pick data where we find find it. But I think there is also here a dimension, um, at least in the European con uh, context. To of course there are. Uh, um, so this is what I, I'm trying to look at, these corporate relations in housing within, 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 uh, within countries. The next step is to look again to the, the class restructuring. So there is also a corporate dimension in class restructuring. So thank you. Yeah.